Uh, my next question for all of you is, okay, you have established your brand, you have taken it to the next level uh, and you have established your presence, but how do you understand your consumer behavior? How do you make sure that you know about your consumer's behavior? Like, how do you understand which are your VIP customers, which are the set of customers that your business is about to lose? How do you make that data-driven decision? I mean, extremely essential in today's time because I think acquiring a new consumer is extremely difficult in today's time and losing would be a bad thing that can happen for a business. And in order to ensure that you have the highest retention rate, uh, how do you do that? I mean, how do you deep dive into your consumer data and behavior? Uh, Trevor, if you would like to shed some light. Yeah, I think that's a really good question. You know, I mean, I think everybody has seen the statistics that it costs a lot less money to retain a customer than it does to acquire one, you know, and with everything that's happening in, in the paid world and, uh, pay, you know, it just costs more and more and more. It's a pay to play game. Uh, yeah. Organic is harder and harder to achieve. Yeah. Uh, virality is harder and harder to achieve. Um, and, and so you really are in a tough spot, you know, Fond Design, it's, it's a very different company because our customer, our customer in the beginning, you know, we, we, we launched seven years ago, our customer in the beginning, you know, if you think about it at the end, of, like our main customer is a new mom, mm -hmm. you know? And so, uh, you know, some of our, our, our biggest selling products and our, our hero products are products that are helping out a new mom. So our customer is constantly, it's staying the same, but those, our customers tend to grow out of us. Correct. Right. So we have to play this game is really important for us, you know, um, not only acquisition, but retention. So, our biggest thing personally uh, has been our product strategy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when, when, when you only have one product, for example, like ours at the beginning, which was a diaper bag, you know, after two years, you lose that person, right? People, mm -hmm. women aren't buying diaper bags over and over and over and over again, right? So all you're doing yeah. is acquiring people and eventually that costs a lot of money, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, with, with the trends of, of how much it costs from an acquisition perspective, there's a time where like, you know, if that's all we did, we could be in a lot of trouble. So I think first and foremost is you have to make sure that your product strategy mm -hmm. is, is spot on, mm -hmm. um, not only from a cost effectiveness, but from a pricing perspective, and then really understanding your customer. This goes back to talking to your customers to say, okay, you know, what happens after, you know, someone's kid, somebody's baby starts walking, you know, what point does that, do they transition out of the diaper bag and what do they need from there? Mm -hmm. You know, and how do we educate them? So yeah. to me, retention is an, is an education strategy. Mm -hmm. You know, we have at Fond Design, we have acquisition products and we mm -hmm. have retention products. That's how we focus our world, you know? So when we're building a new product and developing a new product, we're saying, hey, okay, who is this for? Mm -hmm. You know, who's going to buy this? Is this going to be something that we're going to sell to a net new person? Or is this going to be something we're going to sell to somebody who's already bought with us at some point in time? And how can we get that? buying time frame to mm -hmm. shrink more and more, you know? And so I, I really look at like, one, you have to understand what your customer is. Two, you have to understand what your product strategy is. And if I can add a third one is you really have to understand what your funnel is after you get a customer, mm -hmm. what's happening, what's happening, you know, after you get a customer um, mm -hmm. and, and what are, what does that customer journey look like? Uh, and the better you can understand that, the better you can strategize and really, really understand what you need to do to retain that customer and not have to put as much money mm -hmm. into acquisition marketing. Wonderful. That, that's a very, very uh, you, you, great thought process, I must say. And I think in your case, I think your existing customers, they themselves are the brand ambassadors, I think, because uh, what they are kind of using yeah. from your brand. Absolutely. I think. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if you look at, you know, we, when we figure out where our customers are coming from, like our new customers, 40% mm -hmm. you know, of them are referred from a friend. Wow. That, I mean, that, that's our, that's our, that's one of our biggest marketing channels, which awesome. is really awesome for us. Wow. That, that's pretty great number. I mean, 40% wow. yeah. because that kind and of. Trevor, I'm happy to give you any insight. I have a nine-year-old and I went through many diaper bags that I would, <laughs> they lasted longer and I could evolve them into something else. <laughs> we hear that a lot, yeah, Wonderful. I understand completely. Absolutely, and I think uh, because most of the time it's actually the existing customers who themselves, uh, who have used your product or used your service, I think they, they, have, they are in a better position to kind of 
pass on that message because i think marketing is so much evolving and uh, with the amount of advertising that's happening as trevor has mentioned earlier how organic marketing and paid marketing is becoming costlier day by day for brands and uh, the amount of information that consumers are consuming on a daily basis i think to break free from that and to kind of make a space in the consumer's mind is a very very challenging thing and i think uh, your existing consumers when they become the brand ambassadors i think you can easily break that barrier because consumers trust other consumers so i think uh, chavo i think kudos i think hope that number become 50% or or time <laughs> hopefully amazing